right in the eyeball. I have found oh. all the silver to be a great. There ain't no way you can't put that in your fucking eyeball. What the fuck, dude? A natural remedy for dogs. And that's how you nebulize colloidal silver. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not. Okay. What is colloidal silver? Colloidal the video ends when Hassan comes back. Three, two, one, go. Won't settle, but they're not dissolved. A little longer than a few minutes later. DA isn't really regulating it like that. AKA, that bo Yeah, that's that's not a good look, is it? What's up, people? Uh, today, we got a special one. We're going to be looking at the complexities of content consumption, reaction videos, and the ever-evolving dynamics of online entertainment. Now, honestly, it's not that big of a deal, and <laughs> don't worry, the streamers aren't exactly plotting a galactic domination now, are they? I just kind of find it interesting to observe, well, how content has evolved and their reactions overall. At the very least, this uh, react and walk away model warrants a discussion. And let's face it, it's kind of funny to point and laugh at some of the smooth brain activities going on here, right? I mean, you just walk away and basically leave the work of your stream up to content creators. That's essentially what's going on. But honestly, I'm, I'm no expert by any means. I am no expert, but I know someone who is. The sleeves are a little, they're, they're a little big. This is just me in a lab coat. This is, this is just me in a, in a lab coat. We're rolling with it. We're rolling with it. Hi everyone. Dr. Butterknife here. And uh, today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the world of streaming and content consumption. Our goal is to figure out a way streamers can appease content creators while doing minimal effort. And I mean minimal effort. So we're here in my lab. Uh, yeah, my lab. So I've been doing some testing in my lab, and I think to properly address this issue, we need to dissect the typical process a streamer might follow and understand where the frustration comes from. Now, it's not going to be easy to understand the current process of streaming. It's actually a very complicated beast. We're going to be dissecting the worst case scenario. The current process involves a streamer watching a video during a live stream, probably. During this, they might offer some commentary. They might even engage with the content. There ain't no way you can't put that in your coffee. I've drank too much coffee. Did they just need it? One drop. And occasionally they might even step away to go make a sandwich. It is these scenarios where minimal interaction, coupled with the re-uploading of the full video as a VOD to YouTube, sparks the controversy. It's stealing. Point blank, it's stealing. You see, the crux of the issue lies with those who provide limited input during the live stream itself. They abandon the content while it's playing. They just fuck off to go do something else and then upload the entire stream to their fucking channel. Again, that is stealing. Now you might be asking yourself, Dr. Butterknife, how can we fix this? Well, dear viewer, shut up, let me tell you. I've been researching in the laboratory to find a perfect balance, and I finally broke the code. I cracked it. I present to you the YouTube Book Club. Now imagine this. Imagine XQC watching an Indie Butterknife video. I don't know, one of his reviews or one of his goaded tier list videos. But this time there's a twist. Let's say XQC does everything as normal, right? You know, he plays the video, leaves for a second to get into a screaming match or whatever the fuck he does Shut with his maids. Okay, 56 months of agony. 
When will it end? Then, at the end of the video, he engages in a discussion. This interaction can include debating viewpoints and providing substantial input, whatever you can think of. So here's where it all starts to come together, right? The key here is to clip the YouTube book club portion from the stream and then upload it separately to YouTube. Then, after a week or so, they can upload the entire VOD should they like. It's whatever they want after the video has been released for a while and it got its views. This idea sort of creates an intriguing required reading effect, enticing viewers to check out the original content fully to engage in the conversation. It's also kind of an easy way to create more content for their channel. It also creates more content for their viewers to consume. Ideally, this approach could reduce conflict between streamers and content creators if done right. It offers the path of least resistance for streamers and creates more content for them to upload. It also respects the original content in mind and the content creator. Everybody wins. I don't know. I like the idea. What I do know is that as the digital landscape continues to evolve, finding ways to transform the react and walk away model into an engaging, respectful interaction between content creator and streamer benefits everyone involved. You see, it's... It's not about stopping streamers outright. It's about encouraging them to add their own unique perspective and contribute to the richer online community. Remember, in the realm of content creation, the best reactions are the ones that spark meaningful conversations. But what do you guys think? Do you have any additions to this model, the YouTube book club? What are your thoughts? Put them in the comments below. Thank you again so much for joining me. I know this is uh, different from my typical content, but again, thank you. And like I mentioned, if you have any ideas as, as to improving this, toss them in the comments. Thank you again. Yeah, uh, so I finally read through the script. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's a, it a little weird. Um, I'm not typically one to read scripts anyway, but I felt like I really had to go off the cuff. It's really hard to stay on script this time. What? You, you said AI generated? What the fuck?